Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist and ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower cards catfishes, which are also known as plecos, whiptail catfishes or L numbers within the aquarium trade. And today I'm talking about something that's somewhat related because this is kind of related to dietary ecology and also a few myths that I see surrounding this topic. And one which I found a video and it kind of highlights is what uh, a myth I see quite often and this is related to what has nutrients and what doesn't. So here's two very similar example fruits or vegetables, same thing. Um, that one says people say isn't nutritious and the other one people say is. And so here we have the uh, different estimates of nutrition or behind uh, so courgette and cucumber and this obviously varies it's the USD, um, USDA website it's probably the most reliable I could find about sort of um, estimating on different um, sources but so the main thing that people don't like with cucumber is this water content so cucumber has about 95 um 96 percent we'll say um 96 grams of water per 100 grams so that's pretty much a water but same with courgette you notice most foods when you're dehydrating them then you start to notice where the how much water is actually in foods there is slightly more kilocalories in um courgette but yeah, so we have the two different types of so kilocalories and kilojoules. It, I would say there's definitely a big difference when it comes to these kilojoules. But I guess it also depends on digestion. I'm not entirely sure. I believe calories is uh, done by burning, so it shouldn't be too much different. But actually, a lot of the nutrition is a little bit more complicated than I guess it gets credit for. There is more protein in courgette than there is in cucumber. I wouldn't say it's like this massive amount. Obviously, it's a whole gram. Well, nearly a whole gram more, not a whole gram. Um, fiber. Does it say fiber here? Probably not. Because uh, this one, uh, so courgette's a lot more detailed, it seems, and the websites oh, seem to be a pain to use. Uh, more ash, so with higher mineral content. Um, if we go down to sort of particular elements, so calcium, same amount of calcium, uh, a little bit less iron in cucumber, phosphorus, a little bit more in the um, courgette, potassium, a lot more, oh, almost, yeah, over double. But if you compare it, I don't think it's like, I I think personally, cucumber gets a lot more hate than it needs. It's minorly courgette has more nutrition, but how much of this is accessible would be quite difficult to say. Um, it does seem to produce a lot of waste with low carbs, but if you're going to feed something that might eat more um, uh, vegetables, plant matter in the wild, then they're probably going to be able to take a lot more nutrition from it. Um, most of it hasn't actually been assessed, it seems, for cucumber. Like there's all of these uh, vitamins, so it's diamond, vitamin B1 is a well-known one. Uh, fo Some of them are zero, so like folic acids, vitamin B, B12, obviously. B12 is kind of like, yeah, not naturally occurring in food, in the food, so... Uh, freshwater fish or some can produce their own B12, it is usually supplemented in, but it's kind of like I wouldn't use either of these as a main diet, it's just something to think about when you think about nutrition I, is don't just follow the titles just look at think about what the fish is likely consuming in the wild so anyway I'll leave that here and there's a little bit more to this than other things. This video also looked at frozen food saying it's not nutritious because of the high water content, which is kind of very misleading to be honest. 
because there's a lot more to it. So does water content mean the food isn't nutritious? And largely this is due to the fact, so think about it, fishes are in water so they don't really dehydrate in the way that you'd um, think, so it's not really, they don't really need it for hydration. So the volume of nutrition, um, dry nutrition varies a lot and I'm going to go through these two as an example because there's, I can't just say that a wet food is going to be more nutritious than a dry food, it really depends on your aims and what you're doing. So is the water value? Probably not itself but it might be serving a purpose that makes it valuable. Just because a food is dry, it doesn't make it better. You've got to look more at the ingredients and what's contained within the food and what you're feeding. So just because a dry food has way much more nutrients per gram, per kilogram, it doesn't, um, of dry weight, it doesn't make it more nutritious. It does kind of, economically is another way of thinking about it though because Economically, you're paying for something that the fish isn't going to uptake or utilise or assimilate as nutrients. But this is no different from foods or ingredients that can't be digested and have no purpose, like cellulose um, powder, like wood, anything like that. Or even seals or anything that could be difficult to digest for certain fishes. So just because it's got water content doesn't mean it's difficult to digest. And you've also got to think, if you're thinking economically, it's about dry weight. That it's really difficult to calculate for something like this unless you have a dehydrator. And then it also varies on that. Like the this is much more variable in nutrition. It will depend on, I guess, sunlight that it was exposed to the cultivar, the age of it, how ripe it is, and similar. Because I've seen some very dense uh, cucumbers like that don't even have the sort of water content this does. It was just completely white almost. Only really good for gin and tonic, I think, personally. <laughs> um, but really when you're thinking of foods, I think the best way to think about it, because this is a myth that is so variable and it depends what you're feeding and who you're feeding it to, is what is your aim with feeding? Is this to get the highest nutrition in the fish as possible? Therefore, it doesn't matter whether you're feeding a wet food, a dry food, gel food, frozen food, it matters what species you're feeding and whether it's accessible in general, that individual food. And that's where frozen foods can be really valuable because for some fishes, they are much more accessible in nutrients than say fish meal or, and definitely vegetables or anything they're not naturally adapted to feeding on. So, and then what is your, is your aim like, just to have something going through the gut of the fish? As, treating them like rabbits almost, which I, I don't really know, I don't have much backing up for, then these foods might not be a bad idea, but they might also fill up the gut and prevent them feeding on something that's a lot more nutritious for them. In other sort of things, are, is it a food that you can see the fish feeding on? And therefore for some fishes, vegetables can be really useful for that. And maybe you only want to provide a certain part of vegetable. Maybe I use the skins more than I do the actual flesh, but that's what they tend to feed more on. And this is just going on waste. You can tell a lot about how wasteful a food is by how much uh, solid waste the fish is producing, but then the ammonia and nitrates therefore are a little bit more difficult to calculate. Other than that, what fish are you feeding? It's pretty useless to feed these to carnivores or even algivores, I argue, unless you're feeding it for something that's not about nutrition, which is why I use it for my law cards so I can see them. And also, it's something, I guess, going through the gut between feeds, but not as frequent as always. Sometimes these foods can be useful for just having something going through the gut if the fish is acclimatising to captivity. So just because you might say, oh, it's not as nutritious, first the fish needs to eat and have something passing through the gut, otherwise it's just a bit pointless. 
The next thing is really related to these is, is the nutrition accessible? It's all well and fine to say, oh, there's more nutrition in this dry food, but firstly, can it be processed by the fish's enzymes, gut biota, etc.? It, it, it's a whole different uh, kettle of fish, really, when it comes to that. So, really, half of these we don't know. Is this, this courgette, or zucchini, or zucchini, more nutritious than cucumber? It's really difficult to say. I would say they're probably on equal par, but this might be more difficult to actually digest than this. Just because it's water doesn't mean that water's not nutritious, and the fish isn't going to take up nutrients from that water. Whereas this probably has higher cellulose, that's not really being processed. It is sweeping um, sort of ideas are quite uh, sort of difficult. And also just think about like gut biota makes it a little bit more complex. But I'm going to go into the individual ingredient, uh, well, ingredients, nutrition of these, but understand it is variable. You're dealing with different cultivars and that can vary by country. Uh, different purposes, um, how it's been grown, plants are incredibly variable, but so can the animals, I guess, if you're feeding using them. But the thing is, the biggest myth you'll be told is something isn't nutritious because it contains mostly water. Firstly, cucumbers are nutritious. Just because it has mostly water doesn't mean it's not nutritious. And that goes for like mushrooms, which I really advocate, hence why I have some like, dried ones, because that these car could represent what a lot of car lower cars might feed on in the wild. And then if you're saying about what's accessible or nutritious, then providing wood is not providing any nutrition whatsoever, seeing as they can't digest the um, cellulose or like, um, uh, what's it? Saying lectin, but no, it's, um, oh, never mind, but, um, some of the other fibres within the wood. And thinking fibre is very different for fishes than it is for animals, um, other vertebrates to process. So think behind the fish diet, not just what you're told on the packet. Don't just look at protein values or any of that. You wanna look at ingredients because that will tell you how accessible it is. Just because something is high in protein doesn't mean it's a, as accessible as a protein. And it doesn't mean it doesn't have other ingredients that might not be of high value. And it depends on the species you're feeding. Not all fishes will have the same protein requirements. And most of the studies are focusing on fishes that may be a little bit more piscivorous than others. And that goes the same for any percentages. You do, for any animal, don't just look at percentages. It doesn't tell you about how accessible that nutrient is. So anyway, I'm going to end this video here and thank you for watching.